let me make a couple other points about this system. Historically, when Christians and conspiracy theorists had gone out and calculated the value of different people's names to try to show that there were 666, they've inevitably done a couple of things. They have either tampered with the spelling of the name to make it work out to 666 on their given system, or they contrived or invented an entire numeric system to show that the name or the word or the combination of words was 666. In the case of the Antichrist in a cup of tea, we are showing that the title Prince Charles of Wales, spelled as it is normally spelled, no tampering with the name in both English and Hebrew, on the biblical system, not some system that I went and invented, but the official biblically accepted historic numbering system of both the church and ancient Israel, and Israel today, works out to exactly 666. These things alone make Prince Charles the only candidate there has been in the history of the entire world to be the Antichrist. But it does not stop there. This is a quote from a Walter Badshot, a Victorian constitutionalist. This is what he had to say at the time. He said, quote, All the world and the glory of it, whatever is most attractive, whatever is most seductive, has always been offered to the Prince of Wales of the day and always will be. It is not rational to expect the best virtue where temptation is applied in the most trying form at the frailest time of human life. Interesting quote in the context of the idea that Prince Charles may prove one day to be the Antichrist. I want to go down a few of the bolded points on the back of the book because this is just an overview of the contents of the Antichrist and the Cup of Tea. The book contains a great deal more than what we will be able to cover in this brief presentation. How the Antichrist will use the United Nations to control the world. In the early 1990s, Mikhail Gorbachev began to argue and advocate that the United Nations Security Council be reformed and that in the process of that reform it be expanded to ten permanent non-rotating members who have veto rights. Currently there are five. Japan, Germany, and, excuse me, <laughs> those are the ones he wants to add. The five that exist now are the United States, China, Russia, France, and England. Gorbachev wanted to add Japan, Germany, Brazil, Mexico, and India. There was a complete blackout in the news media on that whole issue until March of 1997. In March of 97, a flurry of articles were suddenly released from the United Nations in regard to reform. They stated they have done their research, they have determined that the way to reform the United Nations and to give it teeth is to first of all expand the United Nations Security Council to ten permanent non-rotating members who have veto rights. Among the new five would definitely be Japan and Germany, India would probably be one of the new five. The other two are still being decided. What does that leave us? That would leave us with the Security Council having three of ten permanent non-rotating members from the European Union. Germany, one of the new five, plus England and France. Additionally, Prince Charles has already requested to be the King of Europe. He began to vocally state his desire to be the King of Europe in 1970, shortly following his investiture in July of 1969, as the Prince of Wales. The British monarchy is endeavoring to become, behind the scenes, the constitutional monarchy of the European Union. And this, by the way, was first published in a reputable source, Majesty Magazine, in 1970. What would that leave us? In Daniel chapter 7, we read a scenario for the little horn of the eyes of a man, the Antichrist, a unicorn with human eyes, rising to power and ultimately gaining control over a world government for three and a half years. The way that that begins is he rises up as the little horn of the eyes of a man among ten other horns or kings. He uproots three of the ten so that he effectively becomes the eighth among seven. Yet in Revelation 17, in the last hour of the tribulation period, we see that there are still ten kings. So for three and a half years, there have still been ten kings, but at the beginning of the three and a half year period, according to Daniel 7, three of the ten are uprooted. By implication, those three don't go away. They become the vassals of the Antichrist. Therefore, if we see the United Nations Security Council expanded to ten permanent non-rotating members, with Germany being among the new five, which is their plan. And I have quoted those articles in the Antichrist and the Cup of Tea, 
And then we see the British monarchy adopted as the constitutional monarchy of Europe. And genealogically speaking, they are the monarchy of Europe. Overnight, Prince Charles of Wales will be in direct control of three of ten permanent non-rotating Security Council members. He will literally fulfill the scenario of Daniel 7 for the rise to power of the Antichrist. Just like that, they expand the council one day to ten permanent non-rotating members. The next week, perhaps, the monarchy becomes the monarchy of the European Union. Who claims the sin from Jesus, Muhammad, and David, yet it appears to be from Dan and Satan? You're going to see a moment, uh, in a moment, put up on your screen the lineage of Queen Elizabeth II. The queen, in her official lineage, claims descent from Israel's King David. As a matter of fact, the queen was literally coronated, Queen of thy people Israel, quote unquote. The British monarchy claims to sit upon the throne of David today. Moreover, it's been announced twice in Israel since May of 1996 on national television, Channel 2 television in Israel, that Prince Charles is a descendant of King David. He is the only human being in the modern history of the state of Israel for whom such an announcement has been made. Additionally, under Netanyahu's administration as Prime Minister of Israel, Israel was invited to join the British Commonwealth. And Netanyahu has said, according to Middle East Digest, and I have quoted that article as well in the Antichrist in the Cup of Tea, to have been seriously considering it. If that takes place, one day Prince Charles will literally be acknowledged as the Davidic Prince of Israel. And we're going to see when we talk about the Middle East peace process that that ties in with the possibility that Israel will in fact accept Prince Charles as their counterfeit Davidic Prince, as their counterfeit Messiah in the near future. Prince Charles also claims descent from Muhammad, and this is documented in the Prince's official biographies, and I have quoted that uh, in the Antichrist in a cup of tea. Prince Charles has given a number of overt uh, uh, speeches, high-level speeches, to prominent Western religious audiences in overt defense of Islam and its religious values. That, combined with his apparent lineage going back to Muhammad, and the fact that the prince is now converted behind the scenes secretly to Islam, taking a title in Arabic, which when translated into English means guardian of faith, and the guardians are the head clerics of Islam, have made Prince Charles the number one ambassador from the Western world to the Muslims of the Middle East, bar none. He is the most prominent ambassador from the Western world to the Muslims of the Middle East in the entire world. Also, Prince Charles claims descent from Jesus through an occult lineage called the Merovingian lineage. Over the last several years, Juan Carlos has been popularized as a possibility for the Antichrist by Dr. Charles Taylor, and after that, J.R. Church. That was based on Juan Carlos's own Merovingian lineage. Now we're going to talk more about the Merovingian lineage when I talk about the Peoria of Zion in a moment, but here's the important thing at this time. The Merovingian lineage claims descent from Jesus Christ. And it goes back, supposedly, to Mary Magdalene and Martha, who had offspring with Jesus who didn't really die on the cross, but survived it and stowed away to France. These offspring were placed covertly on the thrones of the royal houses of Europe over the centuries, according to this occult conspiracy theory, which obviously is not true scripturally, but this is what the royal houses of Europe believe. Juan Carlos is a descendant of someone named Badawin I, who was the brother of Godfrey de Bouillon, the leader of the First Crusade. Both Godfrey de Bouillon and his brother claimed to be of this Merovingian lineage. Godfrey de Bouillon, as the leader of the First Crusade, upon capturing Jerusalem, took the title, assumed the title for himself, King of Jerusalem. Juan Carlos, because he is of the Merovingian lineage, has claimed that title for himself. He's attempted to claim it. Currently, Otto von Habsburg holds it. It was for that reason that Juan Carlos was popularized as a possibility to be the Antichrist by Dr. Charles Taylor and then J.R. Church, as well as others since. Where they missed it, though, is this. 